Hey, welcome to this radio video and I will um, talk a little bit on this video about this uh, little black box, the DSP digital signal processor that you've seen in some of my videos. I get a lot of uh, messages, people saying what is it, what does it do, is it good? And um, there's, you know, a lot of people don't actually know what, first of all, the DSP is. Digital signal processor. Okay, first of all is a circuit or an electronic uh, circuit or box in this case that will take a signal and transfer it into a digital format and it can play with the form factor, the shape of the signal and recognize for example noise and try to eliminate the noise from the real signal and stuff like that. Um, this is a very, very basic digital signal processor. Uh, this was sold uh, at Radio Shack stores for $100 back in the um, mid-90s, I believe. And uh, I bought it at 99 bucks. I thought it was a little expensive. And uh, one day I went to the Radio Shack store and they had like a clearance sale and it was on sale for $49, I believe, half price. And at $49, I said, okay, that's, that's pretty much my price range for this little box. And uh, bought it. And I've, um, you know, installed it off and on for the past, um, you know, 15, 20 years. Basically, it was part of my radios for many years, and then I, um, you know, moved radios around and stuff. Um, thing is, this little box needs an outboard power supply, and at a certain point, I didn't have the power supply needed to actually give it uh, enough energy. Uh, it doesn't work well with a very small wall wire type block uh, because it does uh, use a lot of power, especially because of the audio amplifier. So you need, um, you know, a good 12 volt source that has at least, um, you know, almost an amp of power available, especially when you pump up the volume on the box. And finally, uh, you know, a few weeks ago when I did put back my uh, shack in this new space, uh, I, I saw the, the little box, you know, in my... Uh, kind of my junk box and I said hey I gotta put this thing back on because it has some features that I like and I have a uh, old Canon printer power supply that actually uh, delivers exactly the power needed for the DSP so I recycled that um, Canon power supply and um, used it uh, for the DSP uh, this DSP because two types of DSP are available usually most digital signal processors today are inboard. It means that the radio already has the signal processor inside its electronics. So if you look at uh, iHand receivers today, like the ICOM ICR9500, it has a digital signal processor inside the radio itself. And these are very powerful. They are basically computers that are using signals and treating these signals so that you have the maximum clarity. Um, inboard DSPs also give you a very wide range of tuning so you can for example have almost limitless selectivity um, filters and so on because everything is made electronically. This one is an outboard and it is plugged in the audio so that limits, first of all, its possibilities. So basically, my DSP that you see here is plugged in the output of the audio in the back of the radio. And my outboard speaker that I use here, an old realistic speaker that I like a lot, is plugged into the DSP that you hear. Now, this digital signal processor is supposed, as you see here, there are some options. If I make a little close up here, a little more, you see that we have filters for SSB, single sideband, CW, NR means noise reduction, and you've got three types of bandwidth filters, narrow, wide, medium, and wide. Now, the first 
option that this receiver gives is noise reduction. So when you put it here, if I put, for example, I'll put a signal uh, from a station. Here we go. I can simply press that little button here, and you see that the light blinks, which means that the volume level is just correct. And this is supposed to eliminate some of the noise on the signal and uh, help me get a better voice or better understanding. Now, the radio up. this I'm part the of this worse. device is well, actually I I come to the Lord? not very it's good. It actually distorts the things signal things a little more than it does everything. help. So well, I never use, or like, you know, practically nine, never use that option because it is more of a nuisance than anything else. So that part of the DSP isn't that great. But there are three things that I love about this little DSP, and that's why I keep using it. First of all, the audio amplifier. This little box has a 5 watt audio amp. So when you plug it in, for example, on a portable receiver, you actually can drive a bigger speaker because it has its own audio amplifier inside. So this is one of the great things. And the other amplifier that it has is quite good, uh, pretty low distortion actually. So I like it a lot for that reason, first of all. That's probably the main reason I like using it. Uh, another great feature that I like is for, um, for example, CW signal. If I go to the 20 meter band and tune in, some Morse code signals. Now, when there are a lot of signals, there's not a lot of stuff that I, let's go to seven megahertz and see if there's maybe something more. It's always when you want to make a demonstration that you don't find signals that you want. <laughs> here we go. I can put this in CW on the top here, and this is a very narrow, filter. Now I have wide, medium and narrow. I can really narrow it down. Now and this narrow, look how narrow the signal is. I don't hear it anymore. And I don't hear it anymore. As you see here, it narrows down the frequency range of a CW signal. And for that, it's fantastic. Look at the difference from now and I take it off. You hear a lot more noise, and if there'd be CW signals on each side, you'd actually hear them. And when I put it on, it actually removes everything on each side because it's so narrow in its frequency range. So for that, it's also a great, great little box. If you like listening to uh, CW signals, and even some digital signals, sometimes when there's a lot of signals close together, I'll use this um, on the digital signals. And one last thing about this box is the notch filter. And this is a killer notch filter. I mean, if there's one feature they did in this box that works really well and exactly as described is the notch filter. What is a notch filter? A notch filter is a filter that will actually take out a specific frequency. Um, on my own, uh, my old Kenwood R5000 that I had before, there was a manual notch. So when there's a tone, an example, I'll put it back to the station here and leave it in CW and you see that it tones. And you probably heard stations sometimes, you're listening to a broadcast and you hear this other station close to it and actually makes this little annoying tone. Or listening to ham radio signals and suddenly somebody's keying up or just interfering and you hear this tone. Well, this box is amazing at removing the tones and I'll show you the example. Look at the notch filter when I press here. The tone is immediately removed, immediately. And it actually follows well because if I tune around, you see that the tone changes. Let's check, no tone. You see that while I'm tuning, you hear the changing tone, 
But when I stop, it immediately removes the tone. So this notch filter is amazing for that. If you are on a signal that has a hit or iterodyne, as we call it, which interferes, this notch filter is just so amazing um, and it works extremely well. So the notch filter is killer on this little box. So that's pretty much what it is and what it does. Um, like I said, the DSP or digital signal processing part of it is not very good. Uh, but there are other options that are just so good with it that actually it's worth using it for that reason. Uh, I had one in a message, someone telling me, uh, oh, why are you using that? It's just crap. I've, I've used it one day and I put it in the garbage. Uh, well, that's because you haven't really tried it out. You just pressed noise reduction and, you know, imagine that the signals would become clear. That's not what it does well. There's other options, like I just explained. So that's pretty much what this little box is. Um, I, I, can, I, I was watching this morning on eBay and there are some for sale and people are selling, say, selling it for like 20, 30 bucks. Uh, if someone wants one, but I believe there are much better DSPs. I know I think it's MFJ uh, in the United States that actually makes some DSPs, uh, more expensive DSPs, but that probably are much better than this one at reducing uh, noise and so on. And of course, if you have a lot of money, the best is to have a radio that already has DSP in the radio itself, which is always the best option. Uh, pretty much. So uh, that's uh, pretty much what this little black box does and uh, to give you an idea of how the, the notch works well, when I listen to WWV and you hear the tone, actually the signal is not very strong right now so it's not a good demonstration but I often will try it when it's very strong and I just want to listen to WWE's time picks, I'll just put the notch. And what it does, it removes the tone, but it keeps the time pips going, which I find interesting. So you can try it now, look. You hear the time pips, but not the tone. that's the notch filter acting up on the uh, WWV tone. So uh, nice little box, um, you know, I like it probably also because I didn't expect this box to do that much when I bought it. That's also something that you have to, you know, think about. If you buy this and you think that it's going to um, do amazing things on signals, uh, then I understand why you might actually be, um, you know, a little put down while trying it and uh, kind of have a little deception here. But uh, I wasn't expecting, because I knew that a DSP at that price couldn't do that much. So I wasn't expecting much and actually I think this helped also make a better, um, a better understanding and why I actually like this DSP. Uh, so much. So, I uh, hope everybody understood a little bit what I was uh, saying, and uh, that's pretty much what it is. Uh, this is uh, model number DSP40, and it was made by Radio Shack. It's actually actually a realistic. Um, the, the model name is realistic. It's the DSP40. But like I said, unless you get it real cheap, you know, if you go to a ham fest or you go to a garage sale and you see this thing for five bucks, uh, you know, for five or ten bucks, I'd actually buy it again. Uh, but for, don't, don't pay, you know, more than, I'd say, 20 bucks for this. I don't think it's worth it more than that. Uh, but it can be interesting. And if you have a portable receiver and you want to drive an outboard speaker, it actually has a very, very good audio strength. And of course it can go even more than that because if I pump up the volume in front of my radio here, I can actually pump the volume even more there. So, uh, hope you enjoyed the little video and that it explains to all of you 
wondering what this box is, what it actually does, and uh, keep the comments coming. Hope you enjoyed the video. 73s.